James, start us off. Hey, start us off. my name's James. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I, it's. <laughs> hey, guys, my name's James. And I'm Corwin. And welcome to This Movie's, this movie's gay. gay. Get out of here, Corwin. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, I I'm muting to. you. Uh, in the uh, edit, no. <laughs> in the edit, you will be so muted. Good thing we're not oh in the God. same room because there won't even be microphone bleed. Wow, I can't believe you would uh, you would just cut my voice out like this. Of course I would. He, he's silencing me. He's yeah, censoring me. I am uh, <laughs> on my own podcast. It's um, half your podcast. Half my podcast. If anything, it's like 55 me for, or <laughs> I mean, uh, unless we're talking about the Twitch stream, then it's 55 you, or maybe even more. You do more. But when it comes to podcasting, when it edits, I'm spending an hour plus more on the show than you are. I mean, I'm also like researching movies, finding guests, setting that up. Man, oh, you're researching movies. Most yes. of the time, it's the day before you say, I guess we're doing this one. I suggested this I, one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course, Queen suggested. Because I asked Queen. I found Queen the guest and asked Queen to join us. Hello. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, you are Bye. being a producer in that sense of finding um, guests. I am doing things. The Hello. guests I find I end up flaking on us, so... A hoop. Um, and seeing the guests were joined by the wonderful, the amazing, the fellow streamer, Queen City Q. Hello, Queen. You've been on camera. And while James has been ignoring you, so rudely censoring me. Oh, my Not God. Not ignoring. That's how our show always goes. We uh, do a little banter up front. Then in, that's how most podcasts are. You're, you always try to sure. paint me in a light that is foul. That's because on your other podcast you paint me in a light that is foul. So it's not a proper it's not a proper podcast unless you ignore your guests for at least one minute. <laughs> Corwin also Just completely ignored. Drop the plural from podcast because I only talk trash about you guys on a single podcast. Okay, then you talk trash in another podcast. Also, that everyone knows, or at least I hope the listeners know of that show. I am playing a character i don't really mm -hmm. think you guys are polluting my best friend tyler Bergquest into him then also saying devious things and unkempt material about my show i don't really think you guys are able to mind control my friend from another state I don't know, James. I've heard you talk about theories of things, and you might actually think that. I don't think that. I only think if you've been knocked <laughs> you unconscious. Too, you said that too fast and, like, shook his head too, too much on it. I nope. The uh, body language lied. There's the a delay. No, lied. there's a delay. There's a delay, man. There's no man. delay on there's my a end. Delay. I'm seeing it straight away. Oh, You're not seeing anything from second, me, but I'm seeing half you. Half a nope. second delay. No. Nah, what I was nah. going to say is the only weird theory that I truly honest to God believe in is that when you get knocked unconscious, like from a hit, a hit in the head, those become like save points in your life so that you can like go back to and experience, you know, like when your computer gets kind of fucked up and you're like, oh, I need to go back to like the last checkpoint. It's kind of like that. So if you ever get into a situation where, oh, my God, I, I am able to go back to a previous time in my life. I have so many from my childhood. Is that unfortunate that I can't like I should have been being like, hey, uh, Nicole, knock me out right now so I can use this later in life as a checkpoint. And then Nicole has a friggin' frying pan and thwips me with it. If you want, I'll be your save point any day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come just punch me in the head and I guess make sure I don't fall asleep. My parents don't let worry, me fall I got asleep. a nice cast iron for you. <laughs> I actually, I, I hear people shouldn't be uh, cleaning cast iron, so I don't want anything you greasy. Clean them. You clean them. I thought cast iron, you're supposed to, like, keep greasy. You re no. Am I thinking of a different kind of pan? No, yeah. I think you're just confused about how you clean cast irons and how they work. Okay, how? please tell me, because uh, then people okay. posting these memes are incorrect. 
So, Cast Iron, first of all, the not being able to wash them with soap is is completely a myth. You can wash them with soap, just not a lot. Okay, thank God. The way that cast iron works is that you are basically heating an oil uh, that has a high heat, a high smoking point up so that the makeup of the oil sort of changes and coats the pan okay. so that it makes it nonstick. All right. So you're not just like you know, sticking greasy ass pans in the, in the cabinet. Yeah. See, that's what all these people from my hometown are posting memes about and lesson learned. Don't trust people from my hometown. I mean, a lot of people do that. Like, especially like old grandmas, they'll just, you know, keep it, but you like, you do clean it. It's not, you, you do clean it. That's like also with like stones, you're not so you aren't supposed to be using soap with those, or at least that's what Pampered Chef drilled into my mother's head and then into my head. And uh, no, thank you, because I never feel like it's actually clean, mother. Well, that's different because you're not because stone, it's porous. So the soap goes into it. So everything's going to taste like soap. That's why you don't use soap. I'm porous and I use soap on me. (laughs) Exactly. Nope, not saying it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the thing with the the cast iron is that that layer it makes like a hardened layer of oil, basically that food doesn't stick on. Okay. That's why soap totally fine. It might break down a couple layers, but the point of the cast iron is to build up a bunch of those layers so that you know the food is nonstick. But you don't want to use like tomatoes or anything acidic because that will just break right through. That'll go right down to your iron and you're going to have to reseason the pan. Um, I am always cooking up oranges, so that's probably bad. Yeah, don't do that. (laughs) How was your week, James? Let's we haven't asked that. We've just been, you know, it's going to be quick. It has to be quick because I know in other podcasts I'll be talking about this as well. And the listeners will be like, okay. wow, this was a week in James's life. TC. <laughs> this was a week in James's life. TC oh got us Paramount. Well, TC got himself Paramount Plus, And of course, other people will get Paramount Plus as well. This guy in point. They have Double Dare on there. 200 plus episodes. And. I, you know how people have those memes or not memes, those bumper stickers that's like, rather be fishing. I want one, rather be watching Double Dare. It is so fucking good. I'm cheering on these children who are now older than me by decades. And this show is so janky for it to be this nationally broadcast game show and i'm excited about it it's amazing they just don't give a fuck on this show it's that's how janky it is the a super funny thing i think it's like the third episode in on paramount plus there's this cauldron that they that the kids need to like fish stuff out of so it's like a bubbling cauldron has dry ice in it but this is the 80s there wasn't the internet out people didn't know about special effects and all of that and before these kids are about to grab into it this kid looks scared and looks up at Mark Summers and is like is this safe and he says the subtitles confirm it he says oh no 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 we just put some silly stuff in it you're fine <laughs> and it's just so funny that he called it silly stuff to explain dry ice in one second oh my god okay well that sounds like quite quite a week yeah i've just been i've been watching Watching a bunch of that got it queen how's your week been it's been great I love it. Um, amazing. Yeah. We 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 still have you know uh, a few minutes of of front talk. If you wanted to add anything, Queen, can you tell us a little bit about you? Um, honestly, it's been like a really good week. I have found like so many games that have been like stealing my Dead by Daylight time. So like Hunt's got an event going on. Dead by Daylight's new. DLC came up today, which I forced you to watch me go through the cosmetics of. <laughs> <laughs> they look beautiful. Um, I might get the game. I have the game. I might play the game just for those. You know, is, um, is that the game with that ding dong man and all yeah, the horror yes. creatures? Okay. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> Home Sweet Home, I got to play that. What that one just came out. So I've been in just like horror game heaven 
So it's been great. I'm surprised. Um, like I, I understand why you chose Hedwig um, and why you wanted to watch that one. And I'm sure I'll understand a lot more whenever you, whenever we talk about it and you get into it. But I was surprised that you didn't want to do a horror movie. Um, no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> like right away. No, <laughs> no. Hedwig, Hedwig is there's there is several movies that I think are like quintessential queer movies to watch. And apparently you've watched them with people other than me for the most part, except oh. for Hedwig. Yeah, except for Hedwig. We have not watched Hedwig until now. Like um, try it. Tu Wong Fu, uh, Paris is Burning, three movies you need to watch, and Hedwig. Yeah. <laughs> watched, we just watched Paris is Burning a, a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, whatever it was. Oh, yeah, it's been it's been a month and a half now. Because we tried to watch it our first year during Pride Month, but our guest was super late. Which I guess was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's always uh, yeah you should have you should have brought gas for his car that's what you should have done you should have biked out there oh remember i have a scooter not a bike you should have scooted out there that's <laughs> uh, it's a razor oh, he scooter a, he has a little razor scooter <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing is like i've walked to his house a couple of times and he hasn't been there and just like seeing him scoot up and i'm like all right james I see you. I see you on that scooter. It's the best investment I ever did because you it's lightweight. You, it's compactable instantly so you can bring it on all of the public transit with you. So if you're like, oh, my God, the bus is I need to transfer from one bus to another bus. But that second bus is like two blocks away. We'll just get on the scooter and you're there instantly. Oh is it electric God. or is it manual? It's manual. It's a Razor Scooter 5A. It's nice. <laughs> He got that manual scooter. I'm glad both your weeks are good. My week has been fine. I've literally just been on Minecraft like 24-7. I have not done anything except for Minecraft. It has been Minecraft, Minecraft, and Minecraft. I am a witch now. I'm a wizard. There are a lot of things going on. I got everything. It's great. I love it. I spent five hours the other day sorting chests on stream, and I nearly died not being able to say the words this or that. It took me an hour to complete that challenge. It's amazing. Minecraft. Queen, thank you so much for suggesting this movie to us and agreeing to be on the show. Uh, we, this week, finally watched Hedwig and the Angry Inch, which is a movie that was originally adapted from the stage musical. Queen, what we do with every guest is we have them give us a quick synopsis of the plot. Would right. you care to do the honors? Okay, I have to differentiate the movie versus the musical versus the book, which they came out in reverse order. So it's, yeah. based, off of, so it's based off of a book, which is based off of a or So Hedwig, the movie, is based off of a stage musical, which is based off of a book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Hedwig is the story of a genderqueer person. The way it is told is basically this person is stalking a really famous singer who... Uh, basically took all of their music that they wrote either by themselves or with them. And the way the story is told in all adaptations for the most part is you're basically watching their show at these really, really shitty venues, like a buffet place and a shitty diner and everything, as they're saying what got them to where they are now. And every once in a while, they yell off at the door towards the famous person. And they say songs that relate to their life and tell the story of how they got to where they are now. It starts with them being a, a child in Berlin who was abused by his father, by a priest, by several other people, and then lived with his mother alone in uh, Berlin on the communist side of Berlin because his mom thought it would be better than living in the free side. He grows up, it kind of hints that he's kind of questioning himself, until a American soldier meets him and convinces him to move to the move to the Americas with him by getting married because they're in love. The thing though is back in those days, in order to get married um on the communist side of Berlin, you have to go through a physical examination and Hedwig is a side male at birth. So his mother gives him her, her passport to take his name. He goes to get surgery, like gender confirmation surgery. After the surgery Though a couple of days later, it heals back. So um, they have a song where they talk about it, where essentially they took away his six inches, or they took away his five inches, but six inches grew back. So he has like a one inch little 
mound of flesh where it failed. But he still gets to the States. But a year after moving to the States, the military man leaves him. So he becomes a hooker and a babysitter on the military barracks. While on the military barracks, he meets um, this Christian man whose youngest son he's the nanny for. But uh, he ends up starting a relationship with the oldest son that involves a lot of like songwriting and stuff like that um what happens is though is once they start getting a little bit more towards the intimate side jenny gnosis who's the person they're following uh finds out that you know he's not uh, afab and freaks out and leaves but takes all the messages that he learned about rock and roll all the lyrics and everything like that and becomes a huge star but then denies any existence of hedwig during this, Hedwig is touring, um, and Hedwig is with uh, Yitz is married to Yitzhak, who is their entire band is from another country, and Hedwig holds their passports hostage. Yitzhak and them end up having a huge fight. They rip up Yitzhak's passport because Yitzhak decides to try and go on their own and ask for a divorce. And there's a really important part from the book in the musical that kind of gets cut out here, which I will definitely go into. And eventually the entire band splits because of that. Um, and Hedwig ends up being a prostitute again. Johnny Gnosis picks up Hedwig. They get drunk. They drive the limo and they kind of start making amends. And then Hedwig crashes into a semi. <laughs> because of crashing to the semi, because she wasn't paying attention because she was yelling at Johnny, it gets exposed that like Johnny Gnosis did know Hedwig this entire time and did like everything Hedwig said was valid and correct. Um, and Hedwig finally gets um, the fame that they wanted. But in getting that fame they wanted and getting everything they deserved, they realized their their perception of like they're having to be a soulmate, which they thought was Johnny Gnosis, is is false. And that everything that they thought you know could be destined or anything, they could have made themselves the whole time. They learned to accept themselves as who they authentically are. They let Yitzhak free and they let Yitzhak be the drag queen Yitzhak wants to be, which is something you don't get in the movie, which I will explain for you both later. Um, and then the movie finishes. It's pretty yeah. much it. That's, a, that's the most in-depth. I think that's the most in-depth synopsis we are, mm-hmm. we've ever gotten. Um, that, was the, that was the movie. Uh, I think I, is Johnny Gnosis or Tommy Gnosis? Oh, it's Tommy Gnosis. I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, 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 I, I literally whenever you said uh whenever you were saying Johnny Gnosis, I was like, wait, is that is that the name? But then I, I also didn't want to interrupt you. Uh interrupt. Yeah. It's a it's a great movie and a great musical, and it got a lot of traction um a few years ago because Neil Patrick Harris played Hedwig yeah. um and did a Tony performance with the Hedwig cast. Yeah, it's I mean it's a big movie. It's it's crazy that I hadn't that we haven't done it until now. But also like I again I want like a guest that's knowledgeable that that loves it. So good choice. Glad to have you here for that. <laughs> Fun fact, I don't like Neil Patrick's uh version of it at all. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I, I know a few people don't. We were actually supposed to get it here um in Chicago. I think we did I don't remember if that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it a few years ago. That's like around the time it came is when I left Broadway in Chicago, which is the uh, the place that brings those big musicals to Chicago. And they, I remember a lot of people were very confused and very concerned about that musical. They were like, I don't want to watch this. It's too gay. Um, oh, it's appropriately gay. <laughs> right. Uh, it, was just, it, was a, it was a lot. It was just a lot of things I heard from, like, even, like, not at work. Just, like, you know, around. And it's like, hello, just get over it. Don't don't see it then. My biggest problem with um, Neil Patrick Harris's version of it is he's too sweet. Mm. His voice is too soft and, like, loving. Like, you can hear compassion in his voice. Which is get great in the origin of love, but that's it. Because that movie is rough. Like Hedwig is a rough oh, person. Hedwig is a, a an ass. Hedwig is not great. Hedwig, but, is, like, Hedwig is the villain in the movie. Yeah, Hedwig is the villain in the movie who just happens to have another villain. But they are not good, mm-hmm. like at all. And if anybody watches it and goes, Hedwig is so amazing. No, go see a counselor. Go see a counselor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, James, did you have any notes? What were your thoughts? Tell oh, us. 
right off the bat, this is a movie I wish I had seen in high school because it it's not what's the word I'm trying to think of in like plot or subject matter like the movies I'm about to bring up. But in tone, it's a lot like or like in maybe like cult statusy feeling, you know, like when you see a movie, you're like, oh, this probably has a cult following things like wrist cutters or a uh, Tideland or even like the heart is deceitful above all things. Those movies mm-hmm. were ones that, you know, like my alt friends would talk about. And I feel like this one fits in there and it should be like teens should be watching this movie and being like, this is the fucking best. Yeah. And I mean, it's definitely like my group of friends that watch it. Definitely. I watch wrist cutters with for sure. <laughs> but I mean, I have no idea what any of those things are. It's really depressing. Don't watch it if you're sad. Um, (laughs) I think Risk Cutters is only depressing in like the beginning and like the theme of the movie. But I, I, it's kind of the movie is that if you kill yourself, you go to a place in like you go to a world where it's the same as your regular life was before you killed yourself, but more depressing. Yeah, it's just like a bleak world (laughs) where like instead of beaches that have sand, it's it's just used condoms and needles. I think. It's like a fantastical look on the afterlife if you kill yourself. I it's a I think it's a great movie and I recommend everyone watch it. It's so no depressing. But yeah, like um this movie was really big with the same people who were very into stuff like uh, Party Monster for example. Kind of that there's a point in queer cinema. Watch. <laughs> You haven't watched Party Monster yet I either? Watched Party Monster yet. Mm-hmm. I will come back on to watch Party list. Monster. Okay. <laughs> but, um So with, um, it was kind of in these movies where they were showing the darker but very real sides of queer life. You know, not the pretty side, not the part where we were the heroes in our own stories or, you know, showing our best light, but we were showing a more authentic side. And it would manage to be campy and dark and real at the same time, which, I mean, if you hang out with large gay crowds it is campy and dark and real at the same time (laughs) that's why all of the gay streamers love dead by daylight like let's let's just let's just put that out there it's true you stream if you stream on if you're a queer streamer like the first question you ask them like so do you have dead by daylight yet if not buy it when it's on sale because you (laughs) won't play it (laughs) i haven't yet um tutorial on my switch that's all i've done i have it on switch i have it on switch rip um (laughs) it was cheap on switch (laughs) it's on sale right now on pc (laughs) my pc will not handle that that's why i need to do console but yeah that that's totally understandable and i feel like a lot of that also comes from just the the queerness that's innate in the horror genre um just because of the origins of all of like the villains in queer genres or Mm -hmm. in horror genres i mean no. Well, I mean, there's there's the trope in horror movies for a long time about where you're gays, which mm-hmm. like there's studies about where gay people either had to be villains or had to die immediately. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, that's something we've touched on in almost all the <laughs> all the the gay horror movies we've watched so far, including James's favorite gay bread and breakfast of terror. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally the worst movie i've been rethinking and i think the best movie that we've watched is freddy's revenge like that one has been creeping in the back of my head is like wow man that one's so fucking good sleepaway camp Uh, we haven't seen sleepaway camp yet we had it on our list to watch but um it's one of those that we haven't done yet it's like the iconic gay horror movie because it's not even like kind of gay yeah It's, it's, it's blatantly gay whenever we did our first our very first episode we were that was on the list but we ended up going with hellbent instead uh (laughs) (laughs) i'd like to rewatch hellbent not in a uh, torrented version just so we get like oh if there's a 4k release of hellbent if it hasn't happened make it happen I thought we watched it on Amazon. No, we had to we had to obtain that not legally. Oh my god! Because it don't. was I don't I don't think it was available anywhere at the time. I think that's why we didn't do Sleepaway Camp is we couldn't find it. It is hard to find. 
that that's been the problem with like some of these movies we're like james ordered a movie that was straight to dvd it was awful so it's been hard to find like some of these movies so it's hard to be like oh yeah you all should watch this movie and it's like well where the fuck do we find it let's do sleepaway camp four let's just get get right to the goods no the first one is the goods i want to hear a kid (laughs) say like suck my ass it smells or whatever the hell he says what there's a line where nicole what does that kid say i always say the gg allen song your ass Oh, he just says, your ass stinks, then runs away after pulling a prank on someone. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Nicole. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Okay. James, do you have any other notes? Yeah, so, like, why do you need 31 wigs? I counted all the wigs in in that first hotel room. If you're traveling on a small budget, it just seems like more of a hassle. Like, 10 wigs, that's fine. But why would you need 31 wigs? My guess is that Hedwig is living on the road, and where are you going to put your things if you're living on the road? Yeah. Also, did you see how many different costumes they wore? It's... They were wearing a different outfit for every single show. Mm-hmm. And as somebody who has literally an entire tote full of wigs, plus a whole bunch of styled up, how dare you? <laughs> James, have you ever seen Drag Race? Uh, do you have 31 <laughs> just, like, layered, like, outlining a hotel room that's have you ever no because i have proper stores for them so i don't have to but if you're moving okay, yeah. around that's what you gotta do i feel but it feels like as they're like all you on don't like know anything about wigs why are you why are you commenting on i this? know some stuff about wigs i live with someone who wears wigs and I okay, how, like, how, how often have you changed your hair have i changed my hair yeah mm-hmm. I don't know, like once a year. You mean okay. like hairstyle? Do you, do you ever style it differently? Oh, I don't like like anything that is not of my own body. I do not like on my body. So yeah, but do you like comb it the other way? Oh yeah, I comb it the other way. Yeah, exactly. So when you do that with a wig, you can't do that if you style it. It's stuck that way. Yeah, but I'm just saying thirty one. <laughs> Yeah, so 31 different ways to style your hair if you're using hairspray, if you're getting haircuts. It's totally a legit thing. I think also my my biggest thing is I know Hedwig themselves is not moving those. They are making one of the like people in the band move them. So I'm empathizing yes, with them. Yes, Zach. Which, like, you got to remember, like, another thing that it's implied, um, too, is... So you may have noticed that during the movie, Yitzhak's very interested in the wigs. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is Yitzhak traditionally is always played by a woman who is playing a man who was a drag queen who married Yitzhak. And Yitzhak played a firm rule that if we are to be married, you are never to do drag ever again. Ever. Because Yitzhak is jealous because... or um, Because Hedwig is jealous of Yitzhak because Yitzhak has... Mm -hmm a natural talent at being this fantastic drag queen and Hedwig trying to emulate a woman and seeing somebody who is, you know, a side male at birth doing drag for fun and not being female all the time, being a more feminine version than Hedwig, who is this gender queer person who uh, is trying to align more with the feminine side of them, gets jealous that this person is a better singer, Mm -hmm. a better performer, a better looking and doesn't want it. So they marry them so they can never do drag again. Which is why the one gets all obsessed with wigs and probably happy to style them because that's the closest you can get oh, yeah. to doing drag again. So it's I, actually really depressing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I still empathize, but in a different way now. Uh, <laughs> I, you, I wish they would have dived into that more in the movie, but we do like see things that... My first note was removing the battery pack from the wireless mic during the per- the first performance, well, Yitzog is like hitting a very high note. Hedwig just rips that out so no one can hear them. Mm-hmm. Which Ooh. I Yitzhak feel doesn't... like you're you you mentioned censoring me in the beginning. Hello, James is a Hedwig ripping my wireless mic pack out. If I actually, I wouldn't do that. It would affect the sound. So it like people <laughs> would hear a huge pop. I assume so. <laughs> I mean, and they do, and the in the in the thing, like Hedwig goes louder and pulls it out, and you can hear the visible like wow, <laughs> wow, oop, not yeah, and it's it's 
that's in the very, very, very beginning of the the movie, and it's just it's setting setting the standard for Hedwig. Like mm-hmm. Hedwig is not a great person. No, um, that's, he- that's okay. Hedwig is Hedwig is first and foremost a survivor, and the definition of just because you have traumas doesn't justify your traumas that you give others. And like when you watch it, like you have to keep that in mind that like Hedwig's not a good person. Hedwig is a person who has been in shitty circumstance, shitty circumstance, and basically learned the best way to survive is to take advantage of people and to dominate over people, mm-hmm. which is not a good thing in any way, shape, or form, but it's the way they are. And the whole point of the ending, like, epiphany, is when Hedwig realizes who she is as a person and that she doesn't, she can't blame everything else. And everything's not destined and she really is the make or break for her own future and accepts themselves. And that's when she lets Yitzhak go. And that's when she lets go of her resentance to Tommy. And that's when she starts doing her recovery to being like a good person. And it's because at the very end, they finally get everything they ever wanted and they realize it wasn't enough. They have a breakdown on stage. Then they realize like, everything they were thought they needed to have and everything they thought was destined wasn't enough and wasn't what they needed. What they needed all this time was to realize like that they're valid and okay as who they are. And then they set everybody else free by, you know, instead of trying to force everybody to be under them and to adore them, they realized that they could just be a strong person by themselves. And then they set everybody free. And it's really kind of endearing because it's that, you know, if you're watching a Disney movie, for example, this would be that part where the big bad person has that change of heart and, you know, lets people go. And then everybody goes back to the magical kingdom and sang a happy song and whatever. (laughs) Corwin, do you think, do you ever worry about me? Like what if I, I'm not going to say once it's if, uh, if I ever finally get the fan base I want and it's not enough. And I have a breakdown on stage and not in the predictable way. I'll have a breakdown on stage, which is just crying for 10 minutes out of happiness. <laughs> what was the question? What am I worried about? Uh, do you ever think I'll, I'll be like, Oh, it's just not enough. I'll just keep, I'll never be satisfied. Just like Hamilton and th- other person in Hamilton, Eliza. No, not Eliza. Angelica, Peggy, oh Peggy, maybe it's Angel. I know. <laughs> yeah, Peggy, Peggy's the one that like you see for the yeah. beginning, and they're like, "There's Peggy," <laughs> <laughs> and Peggy. So uh, James, um, no, I'm. I mean, I'm worried that you'll have breakdowns all the time. Yeah. I'm not really worried about you having a breakdown because you don't have because being successful is not enough. It will be though. I think Okay. I just want like 5,000 fans who enjoy what I do and is like, I'm excited for the next thing to come instead of just in one year and out the other. I mean, you don't have to worry about doing the Hedwig thing because Hedwig's was like a quest of vengeance, to be honest. I mean, uh, you I, want who are you trying to show up? Oh, all my co-hosts <laughs> mainly. James is, having, James is like, I'm having a quest of vengeance against Corwin because his channel has more followers. He's like, Corin, Corin is my Yitzhak. I'm stealing all his crowns. Uh, Nick Foster, because it, it, he he believes in me, but I'm like, the, you, I don't think you should. Uh, Why would you have a quest of vengeance <laughs> against someone that believes in you? Well, also, They're he... Like, I, James, I want to support you. I want to, like, here is my adoration. Here is my, my I'm a fan. And instead of like taking that mean like thank you, you're like I'm going to get vengeance for this act against me. Nick once said we were. He said, "Hey James, I don't think you should try and get on like a hardcore record label like for punk rock. You should be trying to get on a rap label. I think you would have a much better time for that." And I was like, "I will get on a hardcore record label out of spite for you." And he's like, "Well, if you do, I'm I'm gonna be happy for you. You're you're like finding <laughs> success." Is- that is something that he would say. Yeah. And it's also something I would say. I mean, that's also like how I live my life is through spite, I feel. Whenever someone's like, oh, you can't do this. I'm like, oh, yes, I can. I mean, yes, I, have a, I can. And now I'm in theater. I mean, I have this wonderful belief that I live by, which is you don't have to get petty if you stay petty. Yeah. So. <laughs> the pettiness. I, I also love pettiness, but in like... 
I feel like my petty is is different. So my way to explain it, I had roommates um, a few years ago that they argued about buying toilet paper. Um, I had bought one of those like big 32 packs of toilet paper. So it was like one of their turns to buy toilet paper. One of them bought like a four pack and then the other one bought like a four pack. And they were like, you're just buying like or one of them bought like a single roll or something like that. And they were like, you're just buying blah, 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 blah. And I just went and bought another 32 pack. And put it in there. And I was like, I don't care who the fuck's turn it is. I want some goddamn toilet paper. See, I got a tushy. So we really, I really helped with that one. Now we buy toilet paper once every six months. Hell yeah. Ooh, yes. Those bidets. Mm. It's the toilet that squirts back. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Which is good every time except winter when it's so cold. No, because it heats up. <laughs> I know it heats up, but sometimes you can't get the heated ones. I got the heated ones. <laughs> get the heated one, Corwin. Proud of you. It was like twenty five dollars more. Except my one roommate turns it to like searing hot, so like I have to like sometimes run it ahead of time to make sure that it's not like steaming. <laughs> I'm like, why? Or do what? I had to do when I lived in a trailer in Michigan during the winter time. Uh, before you spritz yourself, if it you didn't get the heated one, take a hair dryer and like just blast the nozzle for a while, and then it will be warm. What I had to do was our pipes would freeze, so outside I'd with an extension cord just have to blast the main pipe with a hair dryer and wait for it to to be fine inside. It sucked. I feel like there were some steps you could have taken to prevent the pipes from freezing. I mean, I was a 21-year-old on his own for the first time. Not my trailer. It was another person's trailer. They should have been doing these, uh, you know, like, hey, just leave. If you live there. I don't know, Corwin. I I learned this shit. I live in, I live in, I lived in Tennessee growing up. And I learned that shit when I was like 10. Yeah, well, I didn't know that if you leave the water running a slight little bit, it'll be somewhat fine. But also, the main pipe was right, like, it was, if you, uh, you know, like, side skirting on a, uh, there was no insulation around this pipe. Like, it was destined to fail. I mean, Uh, even if there's no insulation, during the winter, you should definitely be running. Well, I didn't know that, Corwin. So that it doesn't freeze and burst. Yeah, I learned that shit when I was young as hell. Okay. I I'm from Canada. That's common knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't know Whenever this. Everything was freezing over in Texas. People were like, oh, do people really run their water overnight and shit? And I was like, yes, because that's how you stop the pipes from freezing when they're not insulated. It's like yeah. a river. Hello? The rich people commented on this with all their insulated pipes trying to say, oh, these poor people in Texas don't know how water works and things like yeah people are giving people that are also poor that grew up with non-insulated pipes are given the same fucking knowledge i live in hawaii so i know nothing about preventing freeze zelly that's that's okay i'll teach you uh zelly also said she's eating and (laughs) she's laughing too much that she's uh spitting things out of her nose whoa that's a high compliment i mean what the food's not coming out of your nose because that hurts as somebody who's had that that happen that that is pain <laughs> but like um, the thing you're chewing comes out of your nose it it's not fun <laughs> especially if you're just eating fun dip oh my god it's granulated sugar coming out of there oh, it's like it's like dang. sandpaper out of your Sand nose blasting your nose <laughs> Stop saying blasting noses yeah uh, uh, did you have any other thank god it's just water yeah thank god zelly um did you have any other notes cuz we actually Jesus Christ, we talked for so long and it felt for so little. I feel like we just started and it's already like 45, yeah. 47 minutes in. Uh, I liked that they were doing the alt scene. You know, they were going to all these restaurants and performing also on uh, piles of tires. So, Corwin, I'm thinking we need to go on to the alt scene of podcasting, which I know you're thinking, how? What does that even mean? Usually uh, there's not even a live element, but we just record in different places, like on top of skyscrapers. That's alt. That's alternative. I mean, there, there okay, I mean, I guess it does that. I would say there is a podcast I know that films live in a bar and the bar patrons are are um, encouraged to heckle while they are filming it live. And I have been on it and it was beautiful. All right. There's I, also a podcast I see TikToks from. They'll, they film outside. They just have like a table 
and like they'll interview people that like walk by or something. I don't know how it works. Let's do well tubing. That's not possible. Like, oh no, you get it. Yeah, you just put your Zoom recorder in a plastic bag. You attach it to like a buoy thing, and then you get James, waterproof you microphones. So, you would be so pissed about the audio quality. You would be so mad. We just get some 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 river tone to you know get that out of there, and we'd be fine. But that's part of the experience. Is this weird wonky audio? And then you're also thinking, oh well, how more alt can we get? We just don't release it digitally. We put it out on eight track cassette. James, okay, how about this? When What's you're up? rich, when you're rich, just absolutely fucking rich. Yeah. Um, submarine. We can do that. Oh. Do you see eight track cassette? That's yeah. Submarine. Aren't those two separate things? An eight a track. Cartridge? Like an eight track. What, did they call them eight track cartridges? They're cartridges, not cassettes. Hold on, let's. I do want to know what, like, they, <laughs> like, did you say an eight track tape? Because it had tape in it, right? Let's see what an eight track the suffix is. I'm looking it up right now. Oh, it is eight, half, eight track tape, also known as an eight track cartridge. Okay, so, so yeah. both. All right. Cartridges is, is clunky, but I like it. I mean, have you seen them, though? They are clunky. Yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, like an eight track cart. I like that. I mean, and uh, I mean, one of the lines in one of the songs is, you know, put on the eight track. By the way, this this movie, if you haven't seen it, has the best album. Oh, and I have so good. I have heard of the like Broadway performances and stuff like that. And I've heard nothing beats the movies because the movies has the writer of Hedwig and the person who wrote who worked with the person who helped write the songs and everything singing it. So he's. He's singing it the way it's meant to be sung, which I find a lot of people don't because it's his story. Mm -hmm. And I just find that like nobody's been able to replicate that for me. I love it. What's what's your favorite? What are y'all's favorite songs from it? Mine? I, I really love Origin of Love because I love the, the myth that it's like pulled from anyway. Um, that's that's a whole thing. I just love Greek mythology and like that's a big part of that. But yeah, what are your favorite songs? I liked Sugar Daddy in the last one. Yeah, like that's really hard for me because Sugar Daddy is the most fun song in that movie. So the Origin Love is one of the sweetest ones, but I really do think Wicked Little Town's probably going to be the one that always kind of sits with me. Also, Wig in a Box is really good. Which one? There's one. What's the one that they get in a bar fight on? That one is my favorite. Angry Inch. Oh, yeah. That one's yeah. also very good. That one's my favorite to like watch because it just gets wild. And I'm like, if I was in that situation where I'm like on stage playing music, doing whatever, and someone just screams the, that slur at me, I am swinging. I well, am and they just do. On like, that they go. stage. But I mean, like, it's such a like every every song on there is good in one way or another. Like Wig in a Box is so fun and campy. Sugar Daddy is another one that's kind of campy. And I love that it's got that kind of like vintage country feel to it. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the origin of love is just like sweet. It's sweet. It it tells like a, a beautiful, fun story. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I like it. Um, but did you have any other notes, James or Queen? Uh, I loved the quote, our apartment was so small, mother made me play in the oven. <laughs> uh, oven, great. Just It left an impression on me like the st stove racks did on my face. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> uh, Hedwig, which this is also like a time where it's like, oh, Hedwig isn't a fun person. Is that just aggressive hand job in the bathtub? <laughs> Like, so, like, just, like, walks in, puts the baby on the floor. On the, floor. <laughs> the baby on the goddamn floor. <laughs> you just, like, see the water splashing, and then, like, ten seconds later, just... And, like, walks away holding this kid. And water's going everywhere. Like that was so aggressive. You, you gotta make yeah. sure, you, like, the motion of the ocean, like, literally, is at a steady pace that it isn't splashing. Okay, There's okay. no wake in this bathtub. This is, okay. this was the hurricane. This 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 tub wasn't having a hurricane. <laughs> hurricane season. 
And then, uh, I mean, I don't think we we have time to get into this. This is just like a thought question. It, like I put down, is Hedwig a reliable narrator? Do you guys think? Wow, you're pulling up reliable narrator. You're talking about not discussing the movies like in depth and stuff. And you said no. reliable. He said reliable narrator. This is the thing is Hedwig is not. All right. But in the movie, you get to see what actually happened more than you get to see what Hedwig is. So that's the come you'll find that Hedwig is saying something. But what you're seeing on the movie is is quite contradictory in like attitude where like Hedwig talks about, you know, x thing happening and how like the fantasy in their head but when you watch it you can tell that like other people's reactions are not the same Mm -hmm. which is what i really liked about the movie is because you can see it and on the stage play that's a big part of yitzhak is yitzhak kind of questioning them and like performing to show that like the contradictory stuff about it but yeah it's it um hedwig's not a good person hedwig lives in their own little bit of fantasy and has an idea how things should be and everything like that. And that's the ending epiphany is that moment that Hedwig realizes that they have to stop living in that fantasy of like fate and what they want the world to be and, you know, take ownership for what it is and make it what they want to be. Maybe that's what I need to do. I mean, I think that's a, it's Hedwig does have like a good message in that for people because there are a lot of people um whether it's in like love or jobs or things like that they're like oh destiny it's that whole destiny versus man thing it's like oh is this going to be like if this happens it's destined to happen and stuff and it's like no a lot of a lot of fate and stuff like that you're if you're talking about that a lot of it's your choice like what you're doing uh with the things that are put before you so hedwig kind of in the beginning had that oh oh this is destiny oh this is my soulmate you know all that and comes to realize at the end that it's like that's not how really the world works Mm -hmm. Um, and it's it's more choice than destiny yeah um Um, i mean that shit's still gonna happen that's that's obviously a thing in real life but you know what you do with it well the thing that i used to always tell people who believed in fate and everything like that um as i said i don't think if there is a high like if there's a higher power that be they're not gonna give you what you want they aren't a cosmic cash register what they're gonna do is they're gonna provide you the opportunities to get what you want and it's up to you to take those opportunities and get them yourself and very much that's kind of the position hedwig's in is when hedwig starts doing a little bit more work and hustle that's when they start, you know, finding their, their true selves. And then you find those moments when Hedwig relies on destiny is when they're the least successful. And mm-hmm. when Hedwig starts putting the work in, that's when things start working out okay. Yeah. Wonderful. We have been going for a bit. Uh, any any last notes, any final thoughts, things like that, James? I highly recommend. Two thumbs up. Well, I meant no. It's not if you recommend it, Jesus. That's my. I wrote that down. I put down. <laughs> I highly recommend two thumbs up. My last note, <laughs> Queen. Was there anything else you wanted to add to the to the movie? Um, anything that we've missed in talking um, about so far? I think That's the most important thing is that when you watch when you watch Hedwig, remember that this is one of the first very active representations of a queer, like a gender queer person, and it's not beautiful or or nice in any way. There are some very, very harsh messages that are in this. Um, Mm -hmm. But as over the top as it seems, you will find gender queer people who are fighting with a lot of some of the issues that you can see Hedwig deal with. So a little bit of a trigger warning. It is very hard. It is very intense, but it is very noteworthy to watch. And just remember that um, not every, like everybody's the hero of their own story but everybody's the villain somebody else's. And that's an important yeah. lesson to learn from that. Yeah. Overall, definitely recommend the movie. I've seen it a bunch of times. So I I enjoyed being able to watch it again for the podcast uh, yesterday. Um, and just like, you know, reveling in, in a bit of the soundtrack. I really like that like style of music mm-hmm. uh, anyway. Um, so, you know, it was great that I got to do that. Because it's, it's been a minute since I've seen a musical, you know? Mm-hmm. This has been too long. 
so yeah, highly recommend. Two thumbs up. They did a musical wow. episode of Double Dare last night, so oh my God, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm leaving this chat right now. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm never coming back, James. I'm never. If you say Double Dare one more goddamn time, I double dare you. <laughs> I'll take the physical challenge, guys. Physical challenge is you better scoot to my house. Uh, okay, like what's the address? Meatballs. Not it's on Canada. Stream, James. I'll dox you. <laughs> scoot James through the snow. And doxing me. Wow. 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 The audacity of it all. The audacity of that caucasity. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Well, thank you so much, Queen, for joining us. We're definitely gonna have to have you on again Hell for, yeah. for sure. you know, a future episode. Uh maybe party party monster since we haven't done that one, or sleepaway camp, you know. Uh, so many movies to do, so many mm -hmm. So many things. We've only done 88 episodes, and a bunch of those were filled with things like eating out, eating out two, eating out three. Uh, give the, <laughs> give the proper a, subtitles. Was a dark, dark time in queer cinema. There was a dark time in queer cinema where, like, the best movie coming out was not another gay movie because at least they admitted that they were farcing the fact that every gay movie coming out in that like late 2000s period was absolute garbage. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, Vampire Boys, Vampire Boys 2. The New Brood. Who thought these needed a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> and the sequel is so much worse. It's like, uh, it's bad. So bad it's good. We enjoyed it. We recommended it. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If you want a fun laugh. Don't um, lie to your viewers like that. <laughs> we're a house of lies built on a house of lies, queen. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, for those of you that don't know where we're caught late, uh, our guest is Queen City Q on the Twitch. Um, I also tag them on, on Twitter. So if you've got our Twitter, do go there, follow them. Um, and I'm going to give them a shout out in my Twitch chat again uh, real quick. But yeah, they stream Dead by Daylight, horror games. What else were you? You were streaming something else that I was like, ooh. You were streaming, um, streaming the a lot of Russians too at one point, didn't you? Yeah, I do the sims yeah. every once in a while. Um, I've been doing a lot of retro lately as well. Um, mm -hmm. we, I think are like five followers away from me having to do the Barbie horse adventure stream. Yeah. Mm hmm. Five followers. That could be y'all. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I do. I'm a variety streamer. Um, first and foremost, um, I really need to start playing Dead by Daylight again. Cause I haven't seen it in a hot minute. Um, they also do community games and yep. drag streams as well. So, and a podcast. And a podcast that I was on. I think you're four um, followers away from that now. Am I? I, I just James follow. Going to follow you, uh, <laughs> James. Uh, we've raided Queen before. You should be following Queen already. I, I don't know why. I, yeah, I don't know why I'm not. Jesus. So thank you for being here. We're definitely going to have you on again. Is there? I I know. I just I just gave some of your plugs, but is there anything else you want to plug? Uh, like social medias, all that stuff. Um, uh no like i said you can my youtube um queen city q my twitch is queen city q tv because somebody sold queen city q and doesn't even go on twitter um, or dark. <laughs> <laughs> um and then yeah like mostly i'm on twitch um you can find my podcast qcq on spotify itunes where that podcast exists yes hell yeah yeah and i'll follow up with you after to get links to those for James um, yeah. so that people can, uh, those of you listening on Spotify and Apple and all of those places, you can, you can find Queens information and go follow them and, and listen to their podcasts. They're great. And I was on an episode. We talked about queer film. I'm um, the first one. Oh, I'm on the first talking about queer film. Um, yeah, I was like, podcast, podcast, we start, we starting this out. <laughs> we starting this out. Um, well, I, I feel so honored. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. Amazing. Uh, so 
go fo- I, I got tongue tied for the second there. Go follow Queen. Um, and while you're following Queen, if you're not following us on Twitter, Instagram, uh, all those places at this movie's gay, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, all those places at Core Winning. Um, those are my plugs. Also, uh, follow my theater company. They're doing things. Uh, Sawbox Theater Collective. All of the info is in all the previous episodes. Just, just go find it. Love you all. Thank you. James, on to you. Hey guys, go over to twitch.tv forward slash mostly speaking sentai where I'm playing games and I'm also making beats live on stream now. And speaking of that, go listen to my music wherever music is found under Marsh Land Monster. But then go over and listen to our podcast, such as Mostly Speaking Sentai, This Movie's Gay, What the Hellmouth, and Hit It and Crit It, wherever podcasts are found, or go over to MLMPod.com for information and links to listen to those shows. And go over to Patreon.com forward slash MLMPod for exclusive podcasts, such as Engage with Nicolas Cage, Talking About Beyblade, The Toku Reading Corner, and The Podcast That Be. And if you're a $10 patron, oh my God, you get shout outs on every single free feed podcast so let's get down to let's those do shout out now. yeah we have steve f eric steve f. eric berry of ranger command power hour eric berry of ranger command power hour alex z aka the waz alex z aka the waz oh ryan he's a rapper and he raps under defo that's d hyphen f o d hyphen f o kayla aka two grapes two grapes duo grun fox that's Two grand for the price of fox. Uh, uh, that's also how I mess it up. Uh, <laughs> Tyler, Tyler Wright. He's a good dad. Tyler Wright. Elliot dad. W. Or Garlic Sunshine on Instagram. And I think that's it. No, it's not Corwin. We have a new ten dollar patron. Ten dollar patron. We know <laughs> them from the chat. It's Jordan B, the Chaos Witch. The Chaos Witch. Oh, I love it. Hell yeah. Uh, Thank you so much for being $10 Patreons. Um, I also have a link for that, MLM Patreon. And thank you Uh, all for watching and listening. Thanks for watching and listening. Love you all. Um, I've been Corwin. I've been James. I've been Queen. I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) see you in class bitch sticks sticks. this has been a marshland media production produced by james mccullum for more content please visit mlmpod.com to support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts head over to patreon.com forward slash mlmpod and sign up today